Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Bill. Uh, this is uh, the Dark Suns update for the last game we just played. So this will be update number eight. Uh, our game masters have changed, so now we're playing Dark Suns for a bit. And I am a player in this game. So without further ado, let's uh, recap what all has happened. We find ourselves on a beach. Uh, the rocks where we had our last encounter are just outside of that beach. We look around, we take inventory of who's injured and how badly from our last fight. And we also level up because some of us, me mostly, forgot to level our characters after the last uh, uh, game. So after a good half an hour to an hour of leveling, we then start exploring the beach. We first go right, and that takes us about 100 to 200 feet. Uh, and then we come to a wall dead end that, go, that just extends into the ocean. And this is a giant uh, freshwater ocean. Or it could also be considered an underground lake. So We uh, then go the other way, and as we're exploring, we're taking our time. And we're letting our guys with dark vision do most of the exploring for us. So, Ort, my um, O Reed, he is the my fighter barbarian. He's the one, one of the ones with dark vision that's in the lead. We come across some buildings. And they're not described as buildings at first. Uh, kind of these uh, mushroom caps poking up out of the sand. We find somebody standing outside. They stand about three feet tall. Uh, and they're pale. Or approaches slowly and tries to talk to this character in, in the four languages he knew. The character reacted poorly to Orc, but responded to the common, but barely responded to the common. Um, so Ort starts talking to him in common. Uh, one of the other characters is standing with Ort, I do believe, or can be seen close to Ort. Well, we talk. We talk like we'd want to exchange information or and or food and get a little bit of knowledge of this area. So he says he'll get the chieftain and meet with us. Uh, he asked how many is in my party. I told him four, even though there was six. So that way we could have two of them hide in case this is not a peaceful meeting. So we retreat back to where the group is. We have two of our characters hide. Um, from there, they come, they talk about being raided and if we would help them, we said yes. Uh, they asked where we came from. We point to the area where the dragon uh, guards the exit on this side of the dungeon. If there is another exit, nobody really knows about it, but we know it's not right here. They bring us a table full of fish, and then I break out my 30 days worth of uh, rations. I give them half that, so they get beef, they get cheese, um, and some hardtack, and they, they chow down on that. After some more talking and figuring out what's in each direction, we decide that we're going to make a ship so we can raid the people that's been raiding these guys. So we divide our group. Ort stays here. He's training the uh, townsfolk as a militia. Teaches them spear tactics, uh, slings, archery, 
but our actual archer stayed here too and taught him real archery. So he found like eight good archers out of the whole group and I found some good uh, slingers, but mostly everyone learned how to use the spears. The party that went to harvest the wood traveled two days to the harvest location. They were warned uh, to avoid the black capped mushrooms. The best description I have for what they are without knowing this for sure, the game master knows more than the player obviously, is that they're a combination of a uh, violet fungus and like an assassin vine. So we harvest a big, uh, one or two big mushrooms, removing the caps, and then changing the shape of the, the stalk to be more uh, like giant beam shape instead of just completely round. And that way we can drag it through the, uh, the freshwater ocean easily enough back to the, uh, the starting location. But that took us like a day to harvest them. And then it took us another two days to come back. So we've spent five days doing that so far. And then I think, I think we end up spending 10 days total per prepping for our raid. Cause after bringing them back, we now have to dig out the center to turn these into giant canoe like uh, boats that our characters can use since we are bigger than three feet tall. They keep us well fed and we keep them train training and such. And then after a day of rest we decide now it's time to sail to the enemy and bring the war to them. Uh, anytime they're burning this mushroom uh, wood, it's been a blue flame. So that's been very characteristic of the area. And it's been very, very entertaining to picture mentally all the time. Well, the chieftain is an ex-adventurer or a retired adventurer retired more of his location than because of his abilities, he comes out with a little bit of armor and uh, a sword to join our raid. And then 39 others join us as well. Handful of them are the archers. The majority of them are the spear guys. We travel the, the three days to the enemy's uh, camp. We don't have any major encounter along the way. Once we're at the camp, we notice that the uh, buildings are on stilts. We divide the gnomes into two groups. We send one group to go set fire to some of the outlying buildings to add as another distraction. And then the others come with us to aid us in the fight. We decide to not uh, wait around to get the fight started. So Ort begins to rage, charges an enemy, and uses power attack. And he charges one of the big guys. There were eight big guys, if I do remember correctly, one of which is the chieftain, one of which is the jailer that's in front of the prison that has more gnome captives. The fire is roasting a gnome on a spit overhead and there are like 12 uh, little guys uh, of this raiding party and they're like normal sized orcs. So we begin fighting, orc charged in with that. He takes out that big guy the following round. Um, Hoya moves towards the jailer, but she starts targeting one or two of the big guys before getting close to the jailer and uses Mind Thrust on him. Our archer begins pelting the chieftain on the surprise round with arrows, doing lots of damage. Uh, and then 
because of the ACs, he moves to the big guys and the little guys and starts uh, pelt, taking them down whenever his uh, dice go for what he's rolling instead of against him. Uh, our Barbarian, that's not one of my characters, our Barbarian, he moves in and he begins fighting a big guy and he makes his way towards the Chieftain, I do believe. Well, after, after a few rounds of combat, well, actually, I should say, as the combat winds down, Hoya's taken some a lot more damage than what she feels comfortable with. She's also blown all her second level spells with Mind Thrust. And now she's half into her first level spells with Mind Thrust, and she's down to single digit HP. She's begun retreating. And then Ort, having taken four of the big guys down by the end of the combat, he is also just barely above single-digit HP, and he's been out of rage for three turns now. He completely used up all his rage in this combat. So note to myself, take the, uh, the extra rage feat, because uh, where he's not pure barbarian class, I might need, if I need him to rage for the whole combat, I might need him to have more rounds of rage. So, just a note for myself. The archer, I think, is the only player character that didn't really take any damage, but he stayed in the back and was the archer. Also, only four gnomes survived. I believe the chieftain of the village survived and then three of the archer gnomes. If there was any others that were close to surviving that we could have aided to survive, we would have. So that's just a note for us and the Game Master for next game. Uh, we raid the corpses of all those that are down before us. We free the prisoned gnomes, and we retreat back to the beachhead, regroup with the other gnomes, and begin to make our way back. That's where the game ended. We more or less abandoned actually uh, searching the building since they were all on fire at this point. So that's where we made it, and that's what's happened last game. And it was one like big combat at the end of the game. Uh, so next game, we get to go back to the Gnome Village and talk with them. And then we're supposed to take a group of those people with us as part of our negotiations earlier uh, to the surface that want to go. So I don't know how many out of the raiding parties going with us, but we will be more than happy to take them, especially with the fact that uh, they were a lot of help considering we didn't ask them to go raiding with us. We were originally going to attack this, in my mind, we were originally going to attack this thing ourselves. And if it wasn't a winnable situation before we began the combat, we were going to raid the raiders, retreat, raid the raiders, and retreat, do that a few times. So. And that's what happened last game in Dark Suns. We are still in the Underdark. And the travel to the what we assume is the way to the surface is almost like a week across the lake or the ocean and it's supposed to be far more dangerous and we might not even go straight across the uh ocean it's not going to lessen the danger if we don't but it will extend how long it takes us to get there if we go the other way and it's just thoughts that i have as a player if we hug the walls instead of going straight across, we might find another beachhead that they are unaware of. If we do, we could explore that area or we could at least set us up an area where we cannot be boat bound for uh, so long. Well, until we game again, guys.